Hello everyone, I am Massa from Coinix and today I am here to tell you that regardless of what career path you're going to have, regardless of what kind of job you want to have in the future or what passion you have or what industry you're going to work in the future, you can be the next blockchain pioneer. You might tell yourself, I'm not even studying finance. I want to become a doctor, or I want to become an artist, or I want to do something that has nothing to do with blockchain and cryptocurrencies. But let me tell you, even if you don't want to do anything in your life, and you just want to be a citizen of a country, blockchain can change your life. Now, what is blockchain? Can anybody answer this question? I think we had a panel, a discussion panel in the morning, right? Do you remember anything? Very technical description, thank you. So blockchain has the potential to change your lifestyle and the way that we do business. It is way beyond cryptocurrencies. It is about the power and the potential of the underlying technology which makes everything possible. Um, you know, it's not just about banks, but so many great banks, so many huge corporations have already started their own blockchain departments, and they are trying to offer blockchain solutions to their customers. And as I said, it is not just related to banks. Maybe you are an entrepreneur who is trying to find new ways of doing business. Maybe you're an artist, and you're trying to find new ways to present your art, to present the skills that you have. Maybe you are someone who loves art and want to support someone who is an artist. Or maybe you are just an immigrant who is fed up with all the fees that you have to pay when you want to send money back to your country or when your parents want to send money back to you. Or maybe you're just a citizen who is fed up with lack of transparency in the government. So in all of these situations, if we implement blockchain, we can change so many things and we can have a better and positive tendency. But why do we need blockchain? Blockchain gives you security. It covers your uh, privacy. You, we all have some information everywhere, like in your insurance, like in your banks and everywhere. And information is everywhere, but we cannot control it. Do you have any kind of control on who can access your information? No, we don't. But when everything is on blockchain, you can control your information. You can decide who can access which part of that information, and that is huge. So just imagine I have a piece of information, which is on a piece of paper, and I put it on my desk. It is very important to me, but if anything happens to that paper, if anything happens to my room, to my house, that information is gone forever. Now imagine I have a network all around the world, millions of computers, and they all are sharing the same information. If anything happens to one of the computers, the others are still working. So there will be no single point of failure. So this is what blockchain is doing. This is basically a simple description of a blockchain. Now let's talk a little about the use cases of blockchain. As I said, it's not just about cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Whenever we say blockchain, everybody are like, oh, investing, trading, crypto, but it's not like that. This is just one of the use cases of blockchain. So cryptocurrencies, these digital in, uh, currencies that we use, this is just one of the use cases, but there are so many other things that we can use with blockchain. For example, document management. When we use distributed ledgers in an organization, in a company, you can see and verify which kind of documents enter the organization and leave the organization. You can see who has modified the file the last time. You can see who has tried to change the file. You can see when it was created and everything is completely transparent for everyone in the organization or in the company and corporation. You can use blockchain as a storage as well. So you can literally um, have anything 
uh, covered on the blockchain. Anything that is programmable can be saved on the blockchain. And then we have tokenization. In the further slides, I'm going to get a little deeper into tokenization. But tokenization can be like um, when you have an asset or when you have the ownership of an asset and you try to put it into a unique unit, which is called a token. Now let's get a little deeper into the use cases of blockchain regarding different jobs and different industries. Let's say you're an artist. You're a painter. You make sculptures. You create art. You do performances. So if you want to use blockchain, one of the use cases that is going to be really useful for you is um, finding where exactly that piece of art was created, how many hands has changed this art until it has landed in your hand, in your home. So you can see all the people who has owned that piece of art before you. But if you don't use blockchain, when you buy it from someone, you have no idea what has happened to this piece of art in the past. And um, nowadays, everybody are talking about NFTs or non-fungible tokens. So if you are an artist, you can literally put any kind of art, any piece of um, anything that you have made into NFTs and sell it. And then we have music. In music industry, when you are a singer, when you're a rapper, or when you create a piece of music, you can have royalties. For example, I am a musician. I create a piece of music, and that piece of music is used in so many songs, not in just one. In every, every single time that fraction of music which is used as an NFT is used, I will get a fraction of money. I will get a profit. That is called royalties. Or for example, when uh, I have an NFT, which is a piece of music, and I sell it, and then it is sold after that so many times more. Each time that it sell, each time that somebody sells it, I will get a little bit of that profit. But when you don't use blockchain, when you don't use this fraction of music using blockchain and NFTs, once you sell it, it's gone. Then you don't know where it's going to land. Then you will never get any more profit from your own creation. Now, what about fashion? What if you want to become a designer? You can use blockchain in the fashion industry to uh, use the supply chain. For example, when you're using a specific kind of texture, a specific kind of material, you can know very exactly it's coming. Is it environmentally friendly? And so many other things. Or, for example, um, you go to the website of Louis Vuitton, you see something as a digital NFT, you buy it, then you will get the NFT, which can be used for your avatar in the metaverse, and the real outfit will be sent to your address, to your home. So this is something that might happen in the future. And gaming. How many gamers do we have here? OK. So when you play a game like Call of Duty, you buy some stuff as you're playing. You buy weapons. You buy skins. You buy outfits. But when you are playing a game, and that game is made by a centralized company, you don't actually own that asset. You have paid a lot of money, but you don't own it. If anything happens to that company, if the company goes bankrupt, or if the game stops, or whatever, you're going to lose your asset forever. Now, if you have your asset on the blockchain, if you buy a weapon in a blockchain-based game, as an NFT, that is yours forever. Even if the game stops, even if you can never enter the game, you can use that NFT, that asset, in other blockchain-based games. You can sell it to other people. You can just keep it in your wallet, and maybe in five years, another game will come into the market, and then you will transfer it into that game, and then you will use it. There is a concept called CD5, and it is the abbreviation of Centralized Decentralized Finance. It is somehow like a bridge between the financial system that we have right now, the normal banks, and the decentralized finance world, the blockchain world. CD5 has the potential to make an opportunity for the gamers that when they play, when they play a blockchain-based game and they earn some tokens, they can directly transfer that money into their real bank accounts. This, is, this, this, has, happened, this has not happened yet, but this is an idea, and I wrote my master thesis about it, so it is possible. And um, it might happen in the future. But so far, we have seen a lot of blockchain-based games 
which has been used by people to pay the rent. <clears throat> tokenization. I explained a little bit about tokenization. You can literally tokenize anything, anything that is called an asset, anything that has a value. Why do we tokenize this stuff? When you tokenize something which is very expensive, which has a lot of value, you will create an opportunity for people who don't have a lot of money to invest in that asset. For example, real estate. There is a really luxury, beautiful house, and I know that in a few years, it will be so much more expensive. I want to buy it, and I want to make a profit and then sell it, but I don't have money. If that real estate, if that asset, is tokenized, I can buy a fraction of that real estate using a tokenized platform. And then, when I make my profit, I will sell it. So I never had that much of money to buy the whole real estate, but I had the money to buy a little bit of it, and that's thanks to tokenization. Or for example, in VC investments, or venture capital investments. So venture capital, uh, is related to investments and startups in which you don't really know are they going to be successful or not. That's why we call them venture. And most of the time when you invest in a company or a startup as a venture capital, you really don't know what is waiting for you. And this is the most illiquid asset that you can have because it's not really too easy to get out. Most of the contracts are like more than 10 years and you really don't know at the end, are you gonna make a profit or not? But using tokenized VC investments, this illiquid asset will turn into a liquid asset. And when we say illiquid, women, it is a little hard to buy and sell. And something that is liquid is easy to buy and sell. There are buyers and there are sellers. And we can even use tokenization for company shareholdings, like if companies, like small and mid-capital companies, if they use tokenization for the shares of their company, they can raise funds so much easier than the traditional way. Voting procedures all around the world are really prone to manipulation. We cannot really say that everything is 100% ethical and everything is getting done with dignity and everything is 100% okay. But if we use blockchain, everything will be 100% transparent. So this is one of the really useful use cases of blockchain in one of the important governmental activities that everybody are doing in all of the countries. Supply chains. Just imagine you're eating a salad and you have some carrots in your salad. You bought it from the supermarket. But do you know where it used to be before it landed in the supermarket? You have no idea. But if we use supply chains using blockchain, you can literally find out where exactly that carrot was created, how many lands it has traveled, with what kind of transportation, and how it has landed in that supermarket, and then in your salad. So using supply chains with blockchain, it will improve traceability, it will improve efficiency and speed, it will minimize manual processes, and it will be really transparent so you can see everything. Healthcare. When it comes to metaverse, the first thing that people think about is entertainment, gaming, videos, meetings, but there is so much more that we can do in the metaverse. How many people are gonna fit in the classroom? 100, 200? But just imagine there is a professor, he wants to show some kind of 3D surgery, he do it in metaverse, and millions of people can join simultaneously to see how it is done. Right now, so many of the classes in medical schools is, do, is getting done using extended reality, which is a mixture of augmented reality and virtual reality, and it can be done inside metaverse. Moreover, most of the patients who are joining a hospital or are visiting a doctor, they have some sensitive data, which is saved in insurance companies, in hospitals, and like, um, they're everywhere. But if we use blockchain, it will be so much easier to manage that data in a transparent way. And moreover, when you go to the pharmacy to get like your medicines, 
Have you ever asked yourself, for example, you get a medicine and it is written, it is a painkiller. Have you ever thought, is it really a painkiller? What if something else is in it? How can I make sure of that? So usually in developed countries, everything is highly regulated and maybe not a lot of people would ask this from themselves, but in not developed countries, there are some really dangerous activities going on and there are a lot of fake drugs getting sold everywhere, which is not really safe. So when we use blockchain, it will be so much easier to handle this problem. So pharmaceutical problems can use blockchain to ensure the authenticity of drugs. Law enforcement and government operations. We can have a smart city in the future. I'm sure that you all have heard of IoT or Internet of Things. But soon we are going to have EOT or economy of things. It's going to be like things or assets or electrical devices. We'll do transactions without any human interference. For example, I have a solar panel on the roof of my house and it creates electricity, but I don't use all of this electricity. And I have a neighbor. My neighbor has some devices in his home and he needs that electricity. So that device will get directly connected to my solar panel. Using IoT, they will get connected. Using EOT and the blockchain, they will do the transaction. So that device will give the money to my solar panel, and my solar panel will give him, will give that, the electricity. I will not do anything. My neighbor will not do anything. The devices will be in contact. So this is something that I'm pretty much sure in a few years will happen, this economy of things. And this, right now, we have some companies which are focusing just on economy of things. And if we move forward to have a smart city, smart banking, smart government, everything would be so much more transparent, so much easier. We will save a lot of time. We will save a lot of money. And when, for example, you know that you are creating an electricity and your neighbor needs it, you can share it with your neighbor, so it's going to save a lot of time. You don't need to go contact any other organization to give it to you. Insurance. Registries of high-value items and warranties. When you want to um, register one of your assets to be insured, you need to provide a lot of information about it. You need to say, when did you buy it? How much did you pay for it? What is the maintenance history of it? What is the life expectancy of this asset? You need to give a lot of information. So using blockchain, it will be so much easier for insurance company and for you as a customer to provide your information. KYC, or Know Your Customer, and AML, or Anti-Money Laundering. Insurance companies need to know who exactly they are dealing with. They need to identify you as their customers. And using blockchain, they can do it so much easier than the traditional way. Parametric products or index-based products. This is a kind of insurance in which something should happen and then they will pay you money. For example, they say, if an earthquake happens and your house gets destroyed, we will pay you 100,000 euros. This, this is the kind of parametric uh, insurance product. So if you want to do this, you need to somehow prove that these parameters have been triggered. Using blockchain, we can do that. Claims handling and distribution of insurance. So when you have an accident, you need to call your insurance company. They need to come. They need to see, okay, what has happened? Whose fault was it? How much should we pay? What exactly is going to happen after that? Doing all of these processes using blockchain would make the processes so much easier for the insurance companies. Now, what does the future hold? All of the use cases that I just mentioned, all of the use cases that you have ever heard about blockchain. They are just the tip of the tongue, the tip of the iceberg of all the possible things. We are only at the beginning of this magnificent technology and many of the use cases have not been discovered yet. And now it's your job to find synergies between your industry and the blockchain. 
the blockchain revolution needs leaders, and maybe you can be the next leader of the blockchain world. Thank you so much.